That was not fake. That was not altered. There were no damage modifications made in any way. That was a real deal clip. Today, I'm going to show you tips, tricks. I'm going to prove some myths wrong. We're going to prove some facts right. I'm going to teach you all you need to know against the vehicles in Halo Infinite. Let's start with a developer on Reddit breaking down the vehicle durability changes that went through in Drop Pod 1 and we get into the actual technical changes that happened. So thanks to 343 Taxi, an employee on Reddit, we got to see that essentially the only thing that changed was all vehicles under the light and medium category of vehicles, so essentially everything other than the tank and the wraith, had their durability against the sniper rifle increased by one bullet. First tip of the day, as you could probably notice, I was shooting it right in the little spot that is historically a weak spot for the ghost in Halo. Not in Halo Infinite. Shoot it wherever you want, it all does the same damage. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff, the little, little secrets you might not know. Some of these I did see like a couple times, but they kind of flew under the radar because no one really cared about vehicles during season one. Everybody was just kind of going, where's the content? That's fine, understandable, but let's get into the meat and potatoes, and I'll teach you something that you might not know. So as we all know, the Warthog anywhere to the body is a two-shot with a skewer. However, the gas cans that are attached to the back of the Warthog don't actually contribute to the vehicle health, even though they're a physical collision piece you can shoot. What that means is you basically have four little pieces of cover on the back of your Warthog that can be shot off and block skewers, snipers, things of the sorts. What this means in practical applications is, say you're a driver and you're trying to get your flag out, you want to make sure any kind of damage source you know is probably going to try and shoot you, make sure you point the back of the hog to it. Vice versa, if you're the, the vehicle saboteur, you don't want to try and shoot the back of it. You want to hit it maybe in the tires, shoot it up over the top, jump, try and get down in the bed of it, anything of the sorts other than shooting it right in the gas cans because realistically, you could end up hitting a gas can, it could do no damage, and it could basically be a blank and you wasted a, a skewer, a sniper, or anything of the sorts. Something you should actively look to do is actually shoot the tires on a Warthog. The tires take as much damage as the body, still making it a five shot with snipers and the like. And that means that not only can you take the health out, you can reduce... ...the mobility as well effectively making it slow, weak, and an easy kill. The special thing about the Rocket Hog in particular is that the turrets actually take heavily reduced damage. You can actually see here in the clip as I'm trying to destroy a hog that normally takes five sniper rounds, it takes me way more than five to destroy this thing. Same deal with the skewer. What normally takes two skewers to absolutely annihilate actually takes four to knock it down into red state and then a fifth to kill it if you shoot the turret. Little tip for my rocket hog gunners as well in the odd chance you find yourself in one and weak, look straight up at the sky. This is gonna cover the majority of your body including your head and also provide a decent amount of chunk of protection to your sides. All right, now let's address the wraith. Is the rear core a weak spot? No. Despite this not being the case historically, the Wraith is a four shot no matter where you shoot it. The same thing actually applies to the Scorpion as well. The Scorpion, much like its Covenant counterpart, is a four shot no matter where you hit it, including the rear vent. Now you're probably wondering, Brad, what the heck was that first clip? So when I said earlier, about like five seconds ago, that the Scorpion is a four shot no matter where you hit it, it's not exactly true. For 
some reason that I don't understand, the Scorpion in this game has an extremely durable front plate. I'll explain. The Scorpion in Halo Infinite has a unique property to where if you shoot it in the front plate, either on the top, the bottom, or either opposing triangles, you get an immense damage reduction. Now this applies to the point where the tank is either a 16 shot, you heard that right, 16 skewers to the front in order to knock it into red state or 20 to outright kill it. Realistically, this is very self-explanatory. If you're the driver, whatever you're aiming at, point the front of the tank at it too. If you're not 1v1 with a tank, point the front of your tank straight at the other tank. At the other end, vehicle saboteur style, if you are trying to kill a tank, don't shoot the front of it. This is, it's realistically, like you only get four skewers when you spawn in and you would need 16. Don't shoot the front of the tank. Shoot the treads, shoot the turret, shoot the top, shoot down, shoot the back. You get the point. Don't shoot the front of the tank. Alrighty. Didn't talk about the chopper. It's nothing special about it. Just kill it. Uh, didn't talk about the mongoose because, I mean, they're just mongoose. They're, you, you kill them with, like, a sneeze anyway. Uh, nothing else is really talked about. The wasp is missing its propeller weak spot that it had in Halo 5. I guess that's kind of significant, but... Realistically, no one aims for it anyway, so that's pretty much all you need to know. You guys have a good evening, and go out there and destroy some tanks. Hopefully the right way.